Hello and welcome to a yoga break, however you want to see our work today. Um, we are specifically focusing on the menstrual phase. So this is a yoga, a series of yoga poses that are dedicated to accommodating the menstrual phase. When we are in the menstrual phase, our body is releasing that which no longer serves through all four parts. That is intuitively, physically, emotionally from the left and mentally from the right. So much is riding the wave of release that manifests in the physical plane as the lining of the uterus, endometrial tissue, and a little bit of blood. But don't misunderstand. You're not losing vital fluids. You're losing the, we could compare it to the way that we are naturally shedding at all times. We're shedding you know, uh, we're letting go of our hair, we're letting go of skin cells. And this is where those different tissues that I just described, they're flowing on a river of blood, but blood is only a tiny, tiny, tiny part of it. And so I really want to keep us out of this idea that we're actually like losing or giving up a life. <laughs> um, the egg was not fertilized. So it was released and it's possible life getting ended many days ago, uh, about 10 days ago. And so this is just a release. At the same time, there is restoration happening within the body, which is why our body powers down because it doesn't want too much outside stimulation to handle because it wants to focus. It wants to get the work done within. Think of a company having a time when they're selling, 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 then they get their clients, then they work through what they need with their clients, then they review what they don't need, and then they get ready for the next selling process. Well, you don't want to sell to clients while you're also getting ready for the next selling process. You can if you are a multifaceted, well-siloed company, but if you're just a party of one, your body being that, then you really want to give your business, your body, time to reorient, restore itself. And in that process of restoration, we also get to reset ourselves. So I invite you to take the same accommodations that I'm describing in our work today off of the mat because your body's really expecting you to do just that. It's powered down for a reason. Our mental is not sharp right now for a reason. The mental is almost consistently operating to handle the outside activity, what we see through our eyes, what we hear through our ears. And if we, if it is working too hard after working for the other three phases over the 28 days, we're going to burn it out. We're going to deplete it. We're not helping it by making it work. So let it rest. The intuitive is going to be really high because the mind isn't doing so much work. So the mind's not doing so much. Yeah, but that's not true. Yeah, but that's impossible. It just lets the information flow in. The emotional is going to be kind of there, kind of not. It might help facilitate some of the information that's downloading intuitively. And then the physical we know is way, 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 way low energy, lots of rest, eating foods that do not require a lot of effort for digestion. Um, is what we're going towards. So rich foods, not so much right now, despite all of those beautiful uh, period boards that husbands and brothers and boyfriends and other friends and partners and wives and girlfriends are making the person who's on their period. Please don't do that because it's too much work for the body to process all that delicious food that's coming in and be able to release, restore, reset. So we're going to break this into two parts. And you're welcome to fast forward to the second part if you don't want to do the first part. The first part we're going to do is the five Tibetan rites through the filter of the menstrual phase. So I'm going to demonstrate the modifications that I suggested in the video where I introduced the five Tibetan rites as a daily uh, part of your day, not even of your yoga practice, just of your day. Um, and then we're going to go into just a few yin poses um, so that we can have access to great poses to use while we are menstruating. And when we're under pressure, what's the fastest way to stop something from spiraling out of control? Move the other direction. So in your day, you find your thoughts are running a mile a minute. You find anxiety is growing. You find your breath is coming from your lungs instead of your belly. 
all of those are indications to a stop time out and that helps stop the momentum that was spinning you out okay so let's get started we're going to like i said i have to have my phone out because my watch um is dead and so a little digital presence eh? um but uh, I'm gonna use it for our yin part and to just make sure that you guys aren't here for half of an hour <laughs> listening to me speak, especially because I'm in menstrual phase, what we call in the Fierce Gentleness Collective priestess phase and thoughts can go on and on and on and they can drop and they can rise again and logic is not very strong. So I'm gonna try my best to stay on task, but I'm also not going to push myself um, to do what my, whole being is not oriented towards doing, which is being really, okay? Roll with me. We're gonna start with the first of the five Tibetan rites, which is spinning. We spin clockwise. We bring our hands up from below so that we can avoid the shoulders being up. The shoulders are always anchoring towards the core in almost every pose you'll ever do in yoga. We're gonna spin clockwise. Our gaze, our chin is parallel to the ground. Our gaze is on the ground. Let's begin. I have to shorten my arms because I don't have space to spin with them fully out. So you don't, but I do, okay? One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Bring the feet together, close the eyes, bring all of the body together and let your body find its balance. And now let's go to the second pose. This one is camel pose. Camel is a very lovely pose, especially in follicular and the time when we shift through from follicular ovulation to luteal, but we're going to do the minimal effort because we are in priestess. So we are on our knees. Our knees are two fists two fists apart, or we might know this as hip width apart. We uh, point our fingers down towards the ground, and then we bring our palms of our hands to in contact with our lower back. Our hands kind of cup our butt, our shoulder, our elbow tips point back. And in order for them to point back, our shoulders are going to da 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 da, anchor towards the core. And now we're going to inhale, and we're going to bring our gaze towards the sky, doing the slightest, slightest back bend. Breathing in the belly. Exhale, bring our chin to our chest, letting the belly contract. Again, inhale. Just the slightest arch, moving with very subtle, very subtle stretching here. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. That's five. And now we're going to go to our third pose, which is, why am I forgetting this right now? Let me see. Spin, camel, yeah, J. So we'll go to our third pose. We're going to do it super, super modified because this takes a lot of work and we want to minimize the amount of work we're doing in priestess. But for some of us, we're, learning a new habit. So we want to uh, hit these points um, to keep our consistency because it's the bit by bit that pushes the needle and creates shift, not the dramatic revolution. That, that shift isn't stable. Okay, so we have the palms of our feet flat to the ground. The knees are pointing towards the sky. I have a sway back, so I have to put my hands under my back to 
uh, support the natural arch that is a bit deeper in my back than most people's, but a lot of people have this. So if you, this is calling out to you, then please set your hands under your lower back where that arch is pronounced. Otherwise, everybody else can put their hands on either side of their hips. And now from here, we're going to lift our knees. We're going to add some tension in our belly, slightest amount, because we really want to keep the work to a minimum. We're going to raise our knees so that now our knees our, our legs, our knee to thigh is perpendicular to the ground and our shins and feet are parallel to the ground. And then we're going to, this is an exhale, we're going to look through our thighs and then we're going to bring everything back down to the ground and that is an inhale. One, exhale, inhale. Two, exhale, inhale, three, exhale, inhale, four, exhale, inhale, five. Let's go to the fourth of the five Tibetan rites, and we are going to point our fingertips towards the front of, towards our feet, both fingertips towards our feet, shoulders are, of course are pinned down uh, towards the core, and we're going to bring our feet to hip width or a little bit wider apart, and let's push in all points of contact with the ground, um, pushing into the feet, into the palms of the feet, into the palms of the hands to lift our center body to tabletop. Our gaze is just going to go to the sky, not all the way back. If you do this um, in priestess, you have a high chance of getting dizzy just because the body can't snap back as fast as it's used to doing. So um, only if you feel strong enough, go all the way back, but I'm not doing that. Gaze is to the sky, inhale. Exhale, seat comes to the ground. Legs extend, heels stay where they are. Inhale, tabletop. Exhale, seat comes to the ground. Heels stay on the ground, hands and heels do not move. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Notice how slow I'm moving. If you need to move slower, you're welcome to slow down the video or watch this again with the video slowed down. Inhale. Exhale. And now let's take our final. We're going to go come to seated and then we're going to just move um, our safety grip. So we're gonna move our hands to the front of the mat using the safety grip on the ground, making an L with our fingers, gripping with our fingertips so that we can protect our wrists. The eyes of our elbows are going to face the front of the mat. If you need to bend your arms more so that you can feel what that feels like for the eyes of the elbow to face the front of the mat, you're welcome to do that. Shoulders are pinning towards the center of the body. We're going to start with our knees and tabletop, and then we're going to just flip our toes to point towards the front of the mat, and then we're going to push everything into downward facing dog. Um, you can modify this as much as you want, and what that means is you could go to just half downward facing dog, or you can go to full. And from here, we're just going to push up and over, down to the knees, and then um, arch cat instead of upward facing dog like we would usually do, excuse me, arch cow. So this is our inhale. Exhale, push back, downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, 
Last one. Inhale. Exhale. And from here, if you came for the five Tibetan rites to experience them in priestess phase, this is the completion of that part. And now we're just going to go to a little bit of yin yoga, protective yoga. So we're going to start in child's pose. You're just going to bring your knees to the ground. And we're going to bring our the palms of our feet to, to um, open towards the sky. Bring our shins together, our knees together. We're going to bring our seat back to our heels. <clears throat> our seat back to our heels, letting our body fold over our knees and letting our palms face towards the sky, the eyes of our elbows face towards the sky, our shoulders. <laughs> I told you almost all poses will always have the shoulders pinning towards the core. In this case, our shoulders are actually going to fold over our knees, making a shell. We feel like a seed. We feel like the fruit inside of a seed. Our third eye is cradled by the earth, receiving the energy as, it, as gravity allows it to passively push into the earth. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so the earth pushes back to the third eye giving it nutrients. Supporting it. Exchanging energy through contact. These subtle, subtle moments. Letting the breath flow down, down, down and experiencing an expansion in the lower back as you inhale and letting the breath flow back up from your root chakra through the other four chakras through the fifth chakra your throat and exhaling out through your nose This is a time for you to be in your temple uninterrupted. Minimal amount of outside interaction. Letting the seed be the seed. No rooting, just being. Our menstrual phase is so special and so sacred because if we skip, if we overlook its needs, we set ourselves up for failure in the following phases, in the following cycle. We may not feel like we're failing when we power through but we're cheating ourselves of what we could be if we allowed ourselves to release, restore, reset. There's so much that comes from resetting. Bring the hands to, bring the hands in front of you and just push up to tabletop and we're going to go into pigeon. So you're just going to bring that, bring the hands to either side of the mat and bring the knee so that it's between the hands. And this could be your pigeon for today. That's totally fine. Um, put a pillow here if this is where your pigeon is. Put a pillow between your ankle and your um, crotch or you can have a pillow ready to go on the outside. So I have my left knee forward, so the outside of my left thigh, I can also add a pillow so that I can uh, relax there and feel a little bit of stretch, just a tiny bit here in this right hip flexor because my left knee is forward. If you want to take it farther, follow me. Stop wherever your um, body needs you to stop. 
um, we're going to point our knee towards the left side of the mat, left knee towards the left side of the mat, the mat. If you get, we're going to extend the foot so that it kicks out, kick, 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 kicks out. And if it gets to 90 degrees, I mean, parallel with the front of the mat, flex your foot because this way you can protect your knee. From here, you might want to add a cushion if you want. And if you have it and it's not forced, okay, 80% effort, you're welcome to bring the whole body so that it kisses the mat, so that the thigh is flesh with the mat. All of your body is supported. The knee is, the right knee is facing the mat so that the eye of the right knee is pointing towards the sky. And then from here, you're welcome to push up for one second to honor your pigeon and then sleep your pigeon and work your way down first to the arms, the lower arms, then you might prop your body up in some way, maybe fold the arms over and hold your head up or eventually come all the way to the ground. But we're working with 80% effort. So that means that you're not stretching, you're not pushing, you're letting the force of gravity work on you. And as you spend time in this pose, your body like a flower will bloom and open up and allow itself to deepen the pose naturally. You will find yourself to be uncomfortable with where you started and you'll need, you will feel that expansion has to happen. And that is how yin works. That's really how life should work if we would allow it. I love the metaphor of the egg. Don't crack the egg before it's ready to hatch. Let the egg hatch. Unless you're making scrambled eggs. Well, that's a bad metaphor because, because um, some people do not eat eggs and I... I apologize for that metaphor. None of this is possible without breath, but the breath is not controlled. Notice I have stopped cueing the breath. In yin, we do not cue the breath. But I will tell you where to send it because that's just where it's supposed to go. It's not like a trick. <laughs> just how you're supposed to breathe. Uh, okay, wherever you unfolded to, let's build ourselves up again. Okay, and we're going to push up on our two hands, and then we're just going to loop this right foot around so that our right heel kisses our left knee, and our right knee kisses our left heel. And this is called fire log pose. It's a lovely way to stretch. It's a lovely way to stretch passively. This, these adductors, this muscle that is um, in the upper thigh. Hmm. If you'd like to expand, deepen this pose, you're welcome to bring your hands, your forearms to the ground. If that feels comfortable, you can, I like to prop my hands up here, prop my head up, or you can just continue to fold over until your body is just relaxed over like this, but like, <laughs> on your legs if you want. Uh, flexed feet though. This is one of the few poses in yin that needs some tension and that's just to protect your knees. Not a hard flex but like some activity there. Mm. If you're feeling like, oh my God, this is killing me, ah, this is not 
the way that yin works. So please back off the pose. If it feels like, ooh, this is, wow, this is nice. That's where you're supposed to be. And you may expand today, you may not. But let gravity be your coach. Mm. Mm. Feel the difference between the irritation that comes with expansion versus pain. Sometimes when we expand into the pose, we feel a slight irritation but that's because we're just moving past our normal but if we are in pain if it's pain you're injuring yourself please don't do that the only way to get used to feeling that difference is to really practice working with this 80 percent effort model because your 80 percent can always go farther but if you push for your 100 percent on the first day of yoga it's probably going to result in injury or in some feeling that like yoga doesn't work or that like some kind of discouragement. In 80%, you just trade better for better for better. Okay. Two hands come back to the ground. Push your body up from wherever you were. And let's take pigeon on the other side. So you're going to... Put that knee, if it was in fire log and you're comfortable with it there, keeping it parallel to the front of the mat, you're welcome to keep it there or back off and bring the pose to wherever is comfortable. The left and right sides of the body are completely different. They act in two different ways. So give them the respect of being different. Um, give them that respect, okay? Today, my right side is a lot tighter than my left side. Okay. So I'm not, my, my leg's not going to go parallel to the mat. Wherever you are, honor pigeon first by bringing the head to placing the head above the hips and like feeling that straightness, feeling that perpendicular moment with the ground and then sleep your pigeon from wherever you are. And remember that where you're starting in yin is not necessarily where you'll end, but giving yourself a good start will make the ending that much more uh, deeper, beautiful, pleasant. And you can always restart your pose wherever you are. If you don't want to have that moment with the third eye again, if you're all the way down, you're also welcome to put your left or your right ear on the ground. If you do that, I'll let you know when you need to turn your head so that you can make sure to balance both sides. And for those of you who know the pose, you're welcome to take thread the needle arms through um, in pigeon. It's a really, really, really nice stretch. It's a nice way to occupy yourself if you've got a little bit of monkey mind going on. For those of you who have the have one ear on the ground, now is a good time to flip it and put the other ear on the ground. Don't forget to flex your foot to support your knee, flexing the foot on the leg that is bent.
in contrast to a yang yoga class, our back leg, our back leg that has the front of the knee kissing the ground and the eye of the knee facing the sky, that's just relaxed. It's not, no, not Barbie toe, not flexed, not pointed, just relaxed. Okay. Mm. Mm. Thank you. God, I love these poses so much. Okay, two hands come to the ground, pushing the body up. Let's loop. Let's loop. Let's bring that uh, right knee, if you're following me, parallel with the front of the mat. And we're going to loop around so that our fire log pose, our left knee loops around and it kisses our right heel and our left heel kisses our right knee and they're on top of each other. And if that's not doable, you can, of course, bend the legs closer and closer to each other. And then it's more, it's almost like a more of an easy pose. And as we spend time here, you can start to bring the legs so that they are parallel to the front of the mat. And for those of you who feel comfortable with it, you can stay here with an erect spine or work your way down towards the ground, work your upper body down towards the ground. Staying with 80%, it's cold, it's morning. I am not as flexible as I would be if it was six o'clock. So I'm not going to go as far as I would if I was doing a six o'clock EM. Hmm. Notice that my yin, when I'm working in priestess, focuses on really sheltering my first chakra, sheltering the front of it, the first and second chakras, not doing too much of exposing it because I, I want it in its darkness. I want it to feel, I want them to feel held, my womb, I want it to feel totally supported. I want my body to feel like it's sheltered, it's safe. Our backs are sharp and spiky and our fronts are soft and malleable. Hiding in our shells. We need darkness for light, right? And darkness can be so, 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 so satisfying. I don't know if you're like me, but I love sleeping in a room with full darkness. Okay, two hands push against the ground. And we're going to very simply honor our work today, bringing our hands to prayer. Inhale, exhale, wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. <laughs> 